with Reggie and D, we'll be making ham and pineapple paninis with the honey mustard dipping sauce, broccoli salad, white chocolate dipped pretzels, and a sweet and salty dog punch. So let's get into it. Episodes, and she hasn't wrung my neck yet. That's a good thing. So, this episode is sweet and salty blends. The melting pot edition. So we just want to thank everybody again for watching, liking, sharing. Please keep liking, watching, and sharing, sharing, liking. liking. Watching, sharing, woo, woo, liking and watching, sharing. We got some big things in the works, as you can see. We got some merch. Woo! Get you a cooking and combo t shirt. Come on, support the cause. Every dollar we get goes into the kitchen, the cooking and the combo. In the combo. We got more stuff coming, don't worry. Y'all need a nice little chef hat? Mama D gonna work that out for you. She worked it out for me, she'll work it out for you too. So, um, let's see here, uh, or, uh, um, uh, What you cooking? What are we cooking today? Well, I'm going to make a ham and pineapple panini sandwich mm. with a little honey mustard dip. Got to have it. Not honey mustard to spread on there. No, no, no. Like a dip. Got to dip that dip up in the dip dip, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, yummy. And then I got some good old sweet and salty dog punch. Tell y'all about that later, what's up in there and what you can do with that. What you making, sweet? I am making a broccoli salad. Mmm. Broccoli. Yummy right here, broccoli salad. And a white chocolate dip pretzel. Mm. Sweet and salty. Sweet and salty. So with that being said, we're talking about sweet and salty blends. So our conversation is going to be about melting pot. A uh, melting pot as in us all here in this world together being all different and diverse. And um, how we all blend together and make this world a beautiful place. Because without us all blending together, this world is not a beautiful place. But is it beautiful? It is beautiful. Just only when we blend together right. If we don't blend together right, it's not beautiful. It's not beautiful. Not right now. The definition of melting pot. It's two definitions. One definition. A melting pot is a pot in which metals or other materials are melted or mixed. The other definition of melting pot is a place where different people, styles, theories, etc., are mixed together. So, we live in a world that is a melting pot. Yes, we do. Where you can get in the kitchen and you can make you a melting pot. So, without further ado, to further ado, tongue's all tied. Let's get into it. Sweetie, tell us about what you're making. All right. So for our broccoli salad, we have eight ounce bacon. We have salt, five cups of small broccoli, one cup of mayo, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, one third cup of chopped onions, one fourth cup of sugar, one Three fourth cup of raisin and one half of sunflower. Ah, that sounds good. That sounds real good. Yes, it does. So, what do you have going on over there? So, what I got going on over here is a little bit of ham sliced, 
a little brown sugar on it. We got some pineapples. We're going to throw it on our griddle here. We got some rye bread. We're going to slap that up with some butter, some Swiss cheese. Woo! And then I got my honey mustard dipping sauce that we're going to have with it once it's all put together. Yes. That sounds so Oh, delicious! I can't wait! Yes, indeed. Slap this on on that there griddle and get this popping. Woo! Let's get it popping. It's popping. It's popping. So today within our combo, we are talking about melting pots and how being blended makes us better. There's so many different flavors that we have here. Flavors and seasonings and sweet and salties and spicy and not spicy, it's just overwhelming. But when you eat some of these things alone, like macaroni noodles or elbow noodles, when you just eat elbow noodles just by itself, it does not taste the best. Right. But when you add that cheese and that salt and then the eggs and that milk, and you put it in the oven for a little while and make a nice Macaroni and cheese that everybody loves. I love macaroni and cheese. How about you? I love it. It's so good. So, let me tell you about the experience I had growing up as a kid. Being uh, placed in a situation where I wasn't in the melting pot, but I was. When I was in uh, elementary school, I was in the fifth grade. I moved from Cleveland, Ohio, which is the hood, hood, to Lisbon, Ohio, which is not quite the hood. Um, I learned how to speak very proper, correct English, not white, proper English. Proper English. Not, you don't talk white, you speak proper English. So I learned how to speak proper English. However, in the fifth grade, I was the only African American kid at that school. The only one. It was me. And it was a school of about, I want to say, a thousand, close to a thousand kids. And I was the only one. That was the, it was a tough situation, it really was, um, because I had grew up all my life being around the hood, the hood, Kinsman, Cleveland, gang, gang. and then all of a sudden my mother just swooped me up and said we're moving to Lisbon, Ohio, where there aren't many black people. All, all the African Americans literally, I think, lived on one street. It was me and my family, our next door neighbors, and then the other family up the street. That was it in Lisbon. So it was definitely, um, we say culture shock, that was a culture shock in a different sense. Uh, moving here was a culture shock to Arizona in a different sense, but moving there was definitely, it removed me from what I was used to, my normal. Seeing African American people every day, being in the hood every day, that's what I was used to, and I got just, nope, no more of that. So that was like a definite, um, I don't know, that was a, a different melting pot experience for me that I can say I maybe did it too much here. What about you, Sweetie? Have you ever had um, I experiences? definitely had a similar experience. We're from California, you know, we're... We lived, we lived in a neighborhood where there was Hispanics and Blacks. So you were very familiar with a lot of Blacks and Hispanics. And then my dad's job transferred to Tucson, Arizona. Yeah, yeah. Where we were the, the last states, one of the last states to celebrate Martin Luther King. So you know where I was going into. When I went to school, it was all Caucasians and it was just us so we came in with the style we came in with the swag and children are so cruel right yes they are they talked about us they talked my mm -hmm. sister had a little beanie on the guy told her that she had a condom head on oh boy and she went, no, she went Cali style, okay? Okay, yep, yep, that's that hood hood. The hood so, come out you real quick. Oh yeah. So yeah, that was a big culture shock to live in Tucson. Well, I can say that I had another experience also where I had to 
tell somebody that the biggest football players, because I moved from Lisbon to Salem, Ohio, which is another lowly African-American populated town in Ohio, and I had to tell people that were bullying on me that the two biggest football players on the high school football team was my cousin, so that they would leave me alone. And I promise you, after I told them that, they left me alone. And I was happy that they <laughs> left me alone. And I rode that, I rode that boat forever. Ruben and Norm, they're my brothers. Them your brothers, they're my cousins. They're your cousins, they're my everything. Woo, tell you. So yeah, it's, it's a definitely different experience sometimes um, growing up for us in different environments. Yes. So uh, we're going to get some of this stuff mixed up. As you can see, I put the sandwich together. We got it all slapped up. So we're going to get this stuff uh, mixed up, broccoli salad all together, and we'll be back with our punch and our pretzel. Yes. All right, so what I did with my broccoli, I put it on the stove and I boiled it for a few minutes, well, three minutes. And then I put it in the water, cold water, to make sure we have it nice and cool. I put it in the strainer, want to get all the juices out. I put it in my, my sauce. So my sauce is mayonnaise, apple cider, Vinegar, bacon, bacon bits, sour seeds, sugar, sunflower seeds, sunflower seeds, <laughs> <laughs> um, some sugar, and we added the onions, and you just mix it all together, mm, and it makes a nice blend. Mm, nicely blended. Ah, I heard that. I heard that. Woo! Uh oh. Uh -oh. Lose the blend. Don't lose the blend now. So what are you doing over there, sweet? I'm getting this drinky drink drink here ready. This is called a salty, a sweet and salty dog. So what we got here is just some good old pink grapefruit. Love that pink grapefruit. And then we got some raspberries. Love them raspberries. And then what I did was I had a uh, a grapefruit, pink grapefruit, ruby red, grapefruit container. I took that and dumped it in here. And then I got me some Wawa, and I took that and dumped it in here. I filled it up pretty much all the way with the Wawa, dumped it back in here. Then you get you some salt. That's the salty part. And you sweet. That sugar, baby. And forget the sugar. And then you mix it all together. And you get your ice, ice baby. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's my son's favorite song, Ice, Ice Baby. And then there you have your sweet and salty dog. Now, for you folks that like to be a little tipsy, you can add your favorite whatever up in there. But we're not doing that today. We're just going to keep it plain and simple. A little grapefruit juice, some water, sugar, salt, raspberries, ice in a glass. Kool-Aid! Yes. That's what I'm doing over here. So yeah, that's that. So right over here, I have the pretzels, and I like to dip it in white chocolate. Anybody else like white chocolate? White chocolate. Do you like white chocolate, sweetie? I do enjoy some white chocolate, preferably on the cookies and cream candy bar. Yes, that's that's. And when you were acting up. You was thinking about going to some white chocolate, huh? I wanted white chocolate. Do my girls understand? Let me tell you one thing. Ain't no chocolate like the dark chocolate, baby. That's the most healthiest for you, baby. Dark chocolate. This is the black and the berry. The sweet juice. So, you put this in the microwave for a minute and 20 seconds. You heat that up. You get your pretzel. You dip it, dip it, and you have yep. your sprinkles, and it looks pretty romantic, huh, sweetie? Like I did something. Oh, yeah, it looked like you did something. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yes! Woo! So, sweetie, have you ever had any other situations where maybe you've been 
not necessarily the only African American, but maybe the only female? Yes. I have worked at AutoZone, so you know that's a lot of males there. And one thing that I really, really love is I referee. So you know when you go to a game, you're always seeing males. And I refereed all sports. And the worst sport I refereed was football. Football. I already know. Because men feel like that's their sport. And they should. Don't you think we have, we both refereed together, right? Beep. And every time I made a call, wow. it was, what do you mean? But when you make the call, it's. Good call, right? Good call, Blue. Good call. Good call, Blue. Good call, Blue. Good call Blue. True story? Yep. And I quit. I said, y'all can have this sport. True story. True story. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess it's time to get this food on the plate and get to the table, huh? Let's go. Yickety! All right. Everything is finally done. We made it to the table. Everything looks delicious. But I know what we got to talk about before we get to eating. Calories. Yes. Very important, especially for someone like me that's watching her weight. So far, everything's been great. I've been doing the intermittent um, fasting. So I first started with the 18 and six. So that means I'm fasting for 18 hours and eating for six. So recently I am doing a 23 and one. So that's the old man fasting. That's one meal per day. So this is perfect. Um, so with the sandwich, that is 300 and 60 calories not bad and also and if you're doing half like this half of 360 and also for the broccoli salad that's 170 calories very good still also for the pretzel you still want to have a good little treat afterwards that's 120 calories that's not bad at all right hmm. calorie schmalories I'm too skinny to be worrying about and watching what I eat. So yeah, I say that for her. I just let her do all of that. I just eat. So, so far I lost a couple inches. So that's Yay, yay. She did. Wonderful. So this episode, Melting Pot, of course, is about blending different ingredients, different foods together to make something delicious. Yes. Kind of how the creator did us. Exactly. He made us all different and he put us all in one pot and said, go be delicious together. So we are trying to be delicious together. And some people didn't get the memo, right? Some of us didn't get the memo, but you know, again, it's back to being taught. Like we're taught these things. It goes yes. from, it goes from in school. Us, learn, we learn about slavery, all of us, and there's two slot sides of slavery. It was the slave and the master. So from a standpoint of learning, I can just tell you from growing up, like learning about slavery put a resentment in my heart towards those who may have been even related to someone that was participating in slavery. When I did research about my family and found out more and more about, you know, where I come from. He white. I, it all changed. Like, I mean, of course, of course I am, but it all changed. So it's all something that we've learned and we just got to unlearn it. That's as simple as that. We got to unlearn it. It's something that's been taught to us. We have to unlearn it. We're not born to hate. We're never. born to love. Never, never, never. Only love. So, Miss D, what are we doing next week? Next week, we are excited. Who's excited? Both. Me and you. Ooh, child. Reggie and Dee. So what are we doing? We have a couple from... Pamper and Eats. Pamper and Eats. They will be coming over, showing us their business and what they do. And we're going to be talking about what, sweetie? We're going to be talking about them after Yes. If you don't
don't know what an aphrodisiac is, look it up beforehand or tune in next week and find out about aphrodisiacs. No children are allowed to Ooh. watch this because it's going to get real, right? X-rated! Or maybe not X-rated, maybe like Z-rated, but still, like it's going to be a little, little off. Yes. So make sure you keep your kids away, away for this episode. Get mm -hmm. ready. Um, we also have more merchandise coming soon. Ms. Desiree has been working hard to get us shirts. We'll show you soon. Hats and other things I can't talk about right now. You gotta wait till I think next week or the week after. But you gotta wait. We got a lot of great shows lined up. I think we got like five more already lined up and we're working on the next ones as we go every week. So, so please, please make one, one of our recipes and take a picture of it so we can put it on our page and you'll be entered into a raffle. And you, you know y'all like to win stuff. You get a shirt or something else. Or Maybe a gift card. card. Maybe, we don't know. We, we won't see. We don't see who's going to participate. Let's get it going. Um, I just want to give a shout out to our production manager. Without her, we'll be nothing. And their games be holding it down behind the camera for us, making sure that we do everything right, making sure we look good, making sure we sound good. And without her, I'd be running around the counter and pressing the stop button, and then running back around and pressing start. So thank you, Danea, for your help. We appreciate it. And I made a special sandwich for you. So, um, got anything else to add to this group? Uh, that's right. Let's see. Make sure that you. That you live in love. Next week is coming. Next week is coming. Well, that's it for the sweet and salty blend, melting pot edition, cooking in combo with Reggie. And D, we hope you all have a great week. Continue to live in love. We a holla. Peace.